is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Jane Sugimura. Welcome to Condo Insider. And uh, this is a show about condo living and issues that affect people who live and work in condos. And today, we usually have a guest speaker, uh, a guest uh, uh, speaker, but today, we're gonna to be talking about a very important uh, issue, and that's fire safety uh, in high-rise buildings after the Marco Polo fire. And uh, so, we don't have a guest speaker, but we will be talking about the Matrix, who will be uh, the guest speaker, because that will be the star of our show. Anyway, uh, everybody knows about the uh, Marco Polo fire that happened in, uh, I believe it was July 14th. And that was a very tragic uh, event because people died and, and property was damaged. And as a result, the mayor uh, introduced a bill, uh, and it's called Bill, uh, bill 69. And um, what that does is it required mandatory retrofitting of all buildings over 75 uh, feet, and that would be anything over seven stories, to be uh, uh, retrofitted with water sprinklers. Um, and, that it, and all of this had to be done within five years. And uh, the mayor has uh, gone on record on saying that this is you know, something that has to be done to prevent loss of life and uh, property uh, in the future with high-rise buildings. Um, our organization, the Hawaii Council of Association of Apartment Owners, and a lot of other people felt that the mayor's bill was just uh, not uh, appropriate. And it's not a good idea. You're talking about 361 high-rise buildings that were identified. Uh, first of all, there's not enough contractors in the state to do retrofitting of 361 buildings. Also, the buildings had no funds set aside uh, for, for retrofitting. And um, even if the buildings wanted to retrofit, they couldn't get loans from uh, banks because they'd have to get 50% of their unit owners to, to approve the loan. And the cost of retrofitting made it very unaffordable because it would be the unit owners who would pay for it. And so what the uh, city council did is they set up a fire, a residential fire safety advisory committee and uh, led by the fire department to review all kinds of options and come up with recommendations uh, to give the city uh, uh, to uh, amend the mayor's bill. And the people who were on that committee, uh, the Honolulu Fire Department, the Hawaii State Fire Council, uh, the City and County Budget and Fiscal Services, uh, the, the City Department of Planning and Permitting, the State Department of Budget and Finance, Honolulu Board of Water Supply, uh, American Institute of Architects, Hawaii Chapter, Honolulu Board of Realtors, the Hawaii Council of Association of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Building Trades, Hawaii Public Housing Authority, Building Industry Association, and Community Association Institute, Hawaii Chapter. Okay, and what I'm gonna talk about today are the recommendations that are uh, being made to the city because that there was an informational hearing this past Tuesday. And the report has been given to the city and it should be made public uh, soon. Uh, so if anybody's interested, they should check with the city council uh, website to see where the report is. Uh, the recommendations made by the committee to the city is instead of having five years uh, for the buildings to uh, comply and put in automatic sprinklers, that it would be extended to 12 years uh, for the buildings to uh, comply with a process where their buildings would be inspected uh, and, uh, and they would have to go through a life safety evaluation. And this, uh, what you're seeing on the screen now is the matrix, the life safety evaluation matrix that was developed by the fire department and, uh, and uh, vetted by the committee. And, um, all, and what it does is it basically says 
is that of the existing buildings that are over 75 feet tall that don't have sprinklers, everybody, all of those buildings would have to be retrofitted for sprinklers, except if you fall within an exception. Okay, and this is very important. All buildings with no interior corridors, that means if your unit opens out into a, a balcony or an open, open uh, walkway and then goes into a stairwell, you are exempt from uh, the uh, water sprinkler uh, retrofitting. And if you're a building under 10 stories, which means if you are eight or nine stories, you are also exempt. Now, out of the 361 buildings, those exemptions take out about 210 buildings. That means there's about 150 buildings that are left. And under this program, uh, well, all 361 have to take the life safety evaluation and get a passing score, but those buildings that have no interior corridor and are under uh, 10 stories will automatically pass. Uh, it's the ones that are uh, over 150, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, 150 uh, uh, buildings that have interior corridors that um, are uh, really going to be challenged uh, by this, um, uh, by the recommendations. And so let's go through this matrix because this basically sets out uh, different safety features in a building and these are things that you can't change like how many, how tall is the building? You can't change how tall it is. The higher the building, the riskier it is, you get minus points. Buildings under, uh, and um, what it does is the life safety evaluation, it assesses the building features and the, and the fire protection systems so that uh, it will provide a minimum level of fire uh, and life safety to the occupants and the firefighters. That's what this whole evaluation is supposed to uh, set up to be. And uh, so anyway, we talked about height, construction. What kind of walls do you have uh, separating the apartment units? If you have concrete or masonry, that's plus points. If you have drywall, it's minus points. Okay, those things, those kinds of things you can't change. Doors, doors in your unit, are they solid doors, uh, not hollow? No louver doors, they gotta be solid wood with automatic closers. That means you check your buildings. If you don't have the solid doors, it's cheaper to replace the doors than to do retrofitting. And if you don't have the closers, just put the closures on because there are gonna be plus points when they do the inspection. Also, uh, you have the doors to the quarters. Go and check those doors, they have to be fire rated. And if they're fire rated, there is a label that is affixed to the door where it is connected to the wall in the jam. And so if you don't have the, uh, the, those fire rated doors and the automatic closures, that's something that the you know, buildings may want to do now because it would be plus points. If you don't have them, it's gonna be minus points. Um, exit uh, access. Do occupants have more than one way to get out of the building? In other words, if you have a typical building with a stairwell on each side, that means the people have two ways to get out. If you have that, it's gonna be plus points. If you don't have more than one way to get out, it's gonna be a minus point. Uh, vertical openings. And these happen around things like pipes that you have in your building. And under the building code, when a building is constructed and you have pipes and conduits and things that go through the building from between floors, they're supposed to put some kind of seal so that there's no air. And if there is air, then th those are minus points, so you should go out through, start looking through your buildings about ver around vertical openings and make sure that all of them are sealed. Smoke management, uh, and this is uh, smoke-proof enclosures. Or do you have open stairwells that are open to the air? Because uh, those are plus points. If you have a mechanical pressurization in the stairwells, it's a big fan that will you know, ventilate the, the closed stairwell. If you have one, uh, then that is a plus point. If you don't have, it's a zero or minus point. Smoke detectors in the units. The, or, or the city ordinance now requires one smoke detector in a condo unit. The current code calls for one smoke detector uh, in the bedroom and one smoke detector in the hallway. If you ha and then if they're uh, in tandem, it's plus points. And if you are current with the, uh, if you uh, comply with the current code, it is plus points. If you only have one in the bedroom, it's going to be a zero point. So that that doesn't help you in this matrix. 
fire alarm systems. It depends on whether you have a bell type of a, a, a fire alarm. Do you have uh, fire alarms that are uh, go into each unit uh, called enunciators? And if the enunciators, is it just an alarm or is it a one-way speaking? Because it, it would be plus points if you have a speaking thing, uh, alarm. Uh, st sprinkler systems, and most of these buildings don't have sprinkler systems, but if you do, that would be plus points. A standpipe in each stairwell. So if you don't have a, if you have a stairwell that doesn't have a standpipe and you have more than two stairwells, uh, then it would probably be minus points. Elevators. Most uh, high-rise buildings have to renovate their elevators. If you've renovated your elevators, that means you're built, you've had to uh, comply with the current code, which means your elevator talks to your fire alarms, your fire alarms talk to the smoke detectors, and, uh, and they have emergency uh, responses all built into it so that you would get plus points. If you have not renovated your elevators, you might have minus points. Emergency lighting in hallways and stairwells. This is something uh, that uh, you need to have. If you have it, it's going to be plus points. If you don't, it's going to be minus. And so we've gone through the matrix items. And so you can see that there are some things that you can change and some things that you cannot. And uh, the reason why I'm, I'm here talking to you about it is that this matrix, when the, city, uh, when the city gets it and makes it public, it will be available to um, all of the uh, building managers and um, uh, so that you know, they can uh, start working on trying to get their buildings uh, up to speed. And in order, and, and what happens to the 150 buildings is that it, if you take this evaluation and um, you, and you uh, don't pass it, and most, most buildings will not pass, that the only way you can pass it is by putting in a partial sprinkler which means doing, putting water uh, sprinklers in the common elements, which means the hallways and the lobbies. Uh, and and that's, uh, that's, in a nutshell, uh, some of the recommendations. Uh, th that's part of the recommendation that uh, went to the city, uh, the city council uh, this week. Uh, and we're going to be taking a break right now. And um, when we come back, uh, we will be talking about, you know, what the buildings can do to get, you know, ready for the life safety evaluation that is probably going to start uh, in the middle of next year. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha, my name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Guys, don't forget to check me out right here, The Prince of Investing. I'm your host, Prince Dykes. Each and every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Hawaii time, I'm going to be right here. Stop by here from some of the best investment minds across the globe in real estate, finances, stocks, hedge funds, managers, all that great stuff. Thank you. Uh, welcome back uh, to Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura, and I'm here talking about uh, the recommendations of the residential uh, life safety, uh, I'm sorry, the Re Residential Fire Safety Advisory Committee to the City Council uh, regarding um, the, the uh, recommendations uh, to change the mayor's bill for mandatory retrofitting of high rises. Um, in the first part of our program, we went over uh, the matrix, and I've gotten a lot of calls, you know, from people who want to know when the matrix is going to be made public. The report has been given to the city council uh, Tuesday, and um, so that will, you know, that should be uh, made public. Uh, I don't know when the city council is going to do that, but the, there, the next hearing on the bill is November 14th. 
So between now and the 14th of uh, November, I believe that the recommendations of the committee and the uh, matrix uh, will be um, made public. So people can go online to the city and county um, website and, uh, and see what it is. This part of the program, uh, we're going to be talking about what the buildings can do to get ready for it, because everybody, uh, it, all buildings in, include uh, uh, in the 361 that are on the list uh, will have to pass a life safety evaluation. And under the statute, under the ordinance, the way it works is that the in inspections are going to be done by licensed professionals, and they will be architects and uh, engineers. Okay, so those are the people who will be doing the inspection. The matrix, which is the tool that they will all use to do the evaluation, is an Excel spreadsheet. It was prepared by the fire department and uh, modified by the committee who worked on it. Uh, it will be given to every uh, all the inspectors who will be doing the inspection, so they'll all be working off the same Excel spreadsheet. And because uh, the city is giving it to them free, and it is part of the ordinance, um, the person who comes, the professional who comes to your building will be charging you uh, for their professional time. So if they come to your building and it takes them a week to finish their inspection, it may be very expensive. But if you, as a, a building manager or an association board, uh, prepare for this inspection, and have uh, information ready for them when they come to your building, it will shorten the time uh, that they have to spend to uh, uh, complete the evaluation, and it will be cheaper uh, for the uh, uh, building in the long run. Uh, the first thing you do is you, you get your building plans. Pull out the building plans, because uh, the, you, uh, as you can see, the first part of the matrix talks about the building. How is it constructed? You have to show the, the uh, inspector what kind of walls you have. Uh, you know, wh wh do you have masonry? Do you have concrete? Do you have drywall between the units? Uh, and why this is important is because if you have concrete or masonry, it's going to contain the fire in that unit. It's not going to spread outside. Whereas if you have drywall, it's going to spread uh, faster. But if you have concrete or masonry, the likelihood of the fire spreading uh, is minimized and so you get points for, for masonry or concrete. And so if you have your building plans, uh, that will, you can show that to the inspector as, when, and when they go and look at the building, they will um, you know, be able to confirm that. Also, you know that they're gonna be looking at stairwells, they're gonna be looking for standpipes. And they know, they, you know th this might be the first time they've ever come to your building and, and you know your building better than they do. So if you have somebody walk them around, to show them where the standpipes are, to show them where the stairwells are, to show them where the lights are. Uh, this is going to uh, reduce the time that uh, they are going to spend in your building. And also, uh, if you have done your elevator renovations, you should have that paperwork ready because that will tell the, in uh, the inspectors that you have uh, done your elevator uh, renovations and whether or not the, uh, and, and what kind of upgrades were made to the fire alarm system and to the, um, uh, the uh, uh, monitoring system in the elevators uh, whether, uh, and, and whether or not uh, the, the, you know, they're all connected. So that documentation uh, w would be helpful uh, if um, uh, you have it. And uh, things like uh, your, your doorways and your closers uh, automatic closer, you should walk around the building and, and, and take a look at them uh, because you can, um, you can uh, replace them before the inspectors get there. Like I said, replacing doors is cheaper than retrofitting. And um, uh, th things like uh, smoke detectors, you can notify your uh, owners that, that they can help with um, the building getting a, a higher passing score in the life of, uh, safety evaluation if they put a, a smoke detector in every bedroom and one in the hallway. And if they're connected, that, in other words, if they're tandem, then they get even more points. And uh, one way that the building can uh, probably assist uh, the inspector 
is uh, to do an inspection of all the individual units to make sure that they have the smoke detectors and you know they're cheap enough if they don't have it maybe the association can uh, install them uh, in order to improve their life safety evaluation score or the you know, you can just install them and charge it to the unit owner but in any event uh, you can do the inspection uh, you can have somebody in, in your maintenance uh, or management or organization go and check all the units uh, and do a certification on the on the dates that the units were inspected and sign it and date it and give it to your inspectors uh, to let them know that you have that all of your units have smoke detectors in the bedrooms in the hallways next to the bedroom and which ones uh, are in tandem and things like the emergency lights that are required in the hallways and in the um, uh, stairwells if you don't have the lights or your lights aren't uh, aren't working well I mean this is a time to go and fix them because you're going to get you're going to get scored on whether or not those lights work and whether or not they provide um, uh, safety to people who want to get out of the building and the the thing that um, is different with the recommendations that are going to the council is that the changes proposed by the committee uh, uh, give uh, extend the time for compliance the mayor's bill says that you have five years to comply by doing mandatory retrofitting and um, uh, the recommendations from the committee is 12 years and uh, and that can be extended to 20 years uh, if you uh, are showing that you are uh, trying to comply with the statute and as I indicated earlier the default or the bottom line is the statute says that all all the buildings that are not exempt have to have a fire sprinkler system unless they fall into an exemption okay so that's the bottom line so what you want to do is make sure that you can get your building into an exempt area and the exempt areas are no interior corridor and buildings under 10 stories all other buildings have to you know pass a life safety evaluation get a passing score and 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 with those 150 under the current recommendations they will have to do at least a partial retrofitting which would mean in the interior corridors and in the uh, common areas like the lobbies um, our organization the Hawaii Council of Association of Apartment Owners has taken the position uh, in the committee and at the City Council and we will be advocating in the City Council that buildings should have the flexibility to uh, uh, avoid having to install even the partial sprinklers because even partial sprinklers are expensive and um, they should have the choice of, of upgrading uh, making uh, changes to their building or upgrading their fire safety systems in order to comply get a passing score in other words they should be able to make those other changes to get a passing score without doing the retrofitting because the retrofitting even though it's it, it doesn't uh, uh, mean that the retrofitting will affect the individual units it's going to be you know the uh, the, the pipes and the sprinklers will be in the hallway they will be in the common element that means that you are going to have to install some kind of a pump uh, and right now and in our committee we were told that you have to have a minimum of 10 by 10 uh, space either uh, in a basement or maybe in a in a in a in your rubbish room or or somewhere in the building you're going to have to have at least 10 by 10 to install this pump and the the piping uh, that will service the partial sprinklers and 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 that comes at, at, a, at a significant cost but you know for buildings who want to do the sprinklers that's fine but you know there are some buildings who don't want to do it and uh, our position is it should be up to the associations uh, you know to make that determination for themselves based on the people who live in the building and based on you know what they can afford to do and and so you know we will continue to advocate uh, for that and uh, I'm, 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 I contemplate right now that there will be 
uh, uh, further programs uh, as this, um, the, the bill develops because the first hearing is on November 14th. And I ask you know, anybody who is, who is uh, interested in this issue to go to the City Council website, for, and it is in the Executive Matters uh, Committee. It will be on a Tuesday. It will start at 1 o'clock. You can submit testimony online, and the, the, the bill with the recommendations will, will be online uh, for you to respond to. So I really urge you know, those people to uh, get involved in the process because uh, this is a, a bill that is being fast-tracked. Uh, second reading, I mean, the vote on the second reading will occur on December 6th at a city council hearing, and that means third reading will happen in January and uh, it could, the bill could be passed as early as February 2018. And that means that sometime, and right now I think uh, in talking to, to the fire chief, it looks like they're advocating for July 1 to be the effective date. And so again, I urge you to you know, stay in touch uh, and, 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 and watch the news and watch the city council and uh, please, uh, you know, get in touch with us and let us know how you feel because uh, we, we will be there uh, hopefully representing the 150 buildings as well as the other buildings who will be exempt. But we will be representing all of the condo owners uh, in trying to resolve this in a way that works out for the, safe, uh, the, the safety of the occupants as well as the firefighters, uh, you know, who, who uh, risk their lives uh, to, to save, you know, people and property in these horrific events. Thank you for being with us uh, today. And we're here every Thursday at 3 o'clock. So please tune in uh, next week uh, for another episode of Condo Insider. Thank you.